Hello, Governor. Hello. You are in Jonesburg for the training on access uh, on the access to the to the capital market for safer African cities. Um, thank you for accepting this interview. So the first question will be, as the governor of Kisumu, what is your perspective on the potential role of bond market in driving economic development at the municipal sub-sovereign level in Africa? I think there's a very important role for the bond market in municipal or sub-national governments. One, because at the moment in many African countries, municipalities and some national governments depend highly on the central government or the national government for their revenues and, and access to capital. That is limiting because the national government has many priorities. For example, in Kenya, in terms of treasury allocation, subnational governments called counties are 15th on the order of priorities of what the government does when it allocates revenue. This notwithstanding the fact that Schedule 5 of our constitution that was passed in 2010 states exactly what functions the national subnational governments do which implies that these functions should be costed when the money is allocated between the national and subnational government to the counties, but this does not always happen that way, which means that we are always short in the counties in, in, in Kenya, in Kisumu in particular, of, of capital to invest in infrastructure and other long-term projects. You mentioned the particular case of Kisumu, so Kisumu being a prominent city in Kenya has the potential to attract investors through municipal bond issuance. What steps has your administration taken or plan to take to explore the opportunities presented by the municipal and sub-sovereign bond market? One, there is a, a, way, a way by which, you, by law, you can access the municipal bond markets. We must be credit rated. We have taken the steps of being credit rated twice. Uh, but that has not yet helped us in access the bond market because after being credit rated, uh, you must go through other processes that the government lays down, like take the case up to the International Intergovernmental Budget and Economic Council for their approval. Now, that we did do, uh, we did manage to do the previous years, um, which means that we need to get another new credit rating. You have to get it every year in order to qualify for the bond market. But I think that will not be a problem for us from now on. What matters now is one, have we internally developed administrative mechanisms and financial, financial management mechanisms for handling money from the bond market. I think we have. And, uh, and we must continue to maintain uh, those structures and institutions within the county to manage uh, money from the bond market. The other thing is to get uh, people who can actually offer the bonds that uh, you can buy from. Uh, that's something that you can only do when you actually uh, advertise for the bond. You, you, you can't know it a priori. Okay, you, you mentioned some of the some of your strategies and challenges. But if you want uh, to anticipate an excess in the bond market in Kisumu, what are the exact strategies that you are proposing to overcome the challenges? Uh, the challenges, one, the first challenge that we must overcome is financial management by our, all our departments that uh, every department must budget properly. The budget must be contained in a fiscal policy document by the county government. It must then be approved by our county assembly. The fiscal policy paper must be but the, the basis of our overall budget. That budget too will be approved by the assembly. And that means therefore that we can now use our budget as a basis for finding out where we, we need extra money from the bond market and then advertise for that based on on actually programs. I think you don't access the bond market if you don't have a very clear idea how you're going to use the money. So we must be very, very clear how we are going to use the market money. Is it going to use for housing development? Yes, because we have a great deal, we have a great need for developing housing for our people. There's a huge shortage of good housing, affordable housing. For our residents. So that is a need that we can have uh, for accessing the bond market. And then those needs uh, automatically means to have partners 
to, to, to be able to achieve them. Uh, in that case, it, it takes me to the question of collaboration and partnerships are crucial in the development of the municipal sovereign mar bond market. So how do you plan to engage with the regional and international financial institutions, as well as other municipalities, to strengthen Kisumu's bond market initiatives? And how do you evaluate the role of the ATIA agency in this process? Yeah, well, that's very interesting because our first, our first, um, our first, our first port of call in trying to get matters, the must, trying to get partners, was was the UCLG, uh, because UCLG Africa partnered with us in doing a case study of the economy of Kisumu County. Socioeconomic data are very necessary to know exactly what type of economy a, a, a lender is dealing with. If somebody is, you are going to get a bond from somebody, you know exactly what type of economy are we dealing with. And I, I think the UCLG has, has taken a very, a very important initiative to have these local economic and social development case studies uh, in, in, in our, in our sub national government. Kisumu being the first one. And I think we're going to benefit from that because now we, we are going to have an authoritative study uh, whose data is collected by a third party, not just ourselves, a third party which is reputable and which is a long-term experience, which has a debate on this kind of issue, and therefore we shall, we shall, we shall be credible, therefore, in offering these data and figures to whoever wants to lend us money. I think that's important, a very important step. Okay, so those data will definitely highlight the, the, the sectors or projects that he soon hold most potential for its success. Uh, so what, what can you say about uh, your plan to prioritize and promote these sectors to attract investors? First, first is in infrastructure really, because in infrastructure lies all things. I mean, if you have good infrastructure, then, then you can get your goods to the market, uh, you can get uh, movement of people too as well. Uh, and this is, I think, very primary in economic development. The other thing about is, uh, the, the, the information and, and the, is that you can offer to people your own citizens options that they never knew about. For example, an area may be growing tomatoes when its comparative advantage would be to branch into fruits, for example, other fruits, because the soil is good, the rain is good, and so on. And so you, you begin to educate your producers as to where their highest potential is, and that is proven by facts which you put before when you are offering a bond that, for example, you are offering an agricultural development bond for development of, 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 of various agricultural products. Um, and you state specifically where the products are going to be be produced so that it's not left to chance that if somebody invests in an agricultural bond, they will lose money because it will not go to a productive enterprise. Something like that is very important for us in Kisu. This takes us to the last question, Governor. Yeah, yeah. Um, what message or advice do you have for the other African municipalities considering entering the municipal sub-sovereign bond market? based on your experience and insight gained as the governor of Kisumu? My, 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 most, my most important I think, feeling, really, or uh, the feeling I have, is that we must learn from each other. I think almost every subnational government has something to offer that other can learn from. For example, today in this meeting, we've learned that the South African bond market started in the year 1812. It's now 20 years old. And in South Africa, when you buy a bond, in the U.S. for that matter, when you buy a bond, you get a great tax exemption. That's very attractive because some people may be having some money under their pillow. But they're not quite sure that putting a bond market is the best. But if you're told if you invest in the bond, you're going to get tax exemption, they'll run get it up from under the pillow and take it there because there's a they, they good incentive because people don't really like paying taxes, by the way, <laughs> to tell you yeah. the truth. But they pay taxes because it's the law. You know, when somebody tells you that, look, your money is not going to just earn you interest in a bond, but it's going to have tax exemption, that's double the incentive for you to do so. So I think we've learned a lot here that there are certain things that you can learn from other jurisdictions. Uh, another thing we learned from South Africa is that 
what you want to establish a municipal bond in, in a subnational government, in a municipality, you don't need to get permission from the Treasury. You just do it, provided you follow the regulations. Uh, and so too much control from the center can also inhibit the initiative that subnational governments can take or municipalities can take in, in going to the bond market. So I think our central governments and national governments must also learn from each other that too much control may inhibit growth and development because you don't allow people or municipalities and national entities to access the money market.